In this video, we are going to cover dummy variables, interaction terms, and regressions with a time trend. So I'm going to start by loading the data. I see the data has been correctly loaded. And we can start uh, creating the dummy variables. So dummy variables are variables that equal to 1 if the observation belongs to a group and zero if the opposition the observation doesn't belong to the group so for instance if we want the group of observation for quebec every observation in quebec we have the dummy variable for quebec equal to one and all the observation that are in the other provinces um, will be equal to uh, zero for this particular dummy variable so for instance in our data if we want to group observation uh, by year I'm going to use the uh, my data year variable. And if we open the my data um, data frame, we see that at the moment the year is just uh, 2001 to 2010 or to 2011, sorry. And it's not a dummy variable. We have just the name of the category. So the category of observation for 2001, another category for 2002, etc. So I'm going to tell Stata that I want here to be a factor. So a factor just, the factor command just tells Stata that this is a category. Then I want these factor to be used to create a matrix. So the command is model matrix. And this matrix will use the factor created uh, by the year categories to uh, be generated. So I'm going to save this in year dummies dot matrix. The dots in R as are just used to uh, put spaces in name. They don't have uh, on the other significations here. So let's first run this. And I see the year dummy matrix variable had, has been created. If I open it, I see that there is an intercept and that the year 2001 has been omitted. So if I don't want the year 2001 to be omitted and don't have an intercept instead, I can say uh, put in the model here 0 plus. It means no intercept. If I rerun this command and reopen the year dummies matrix, I see that now I have 2001, which is equal to 1 for each observation in 2001, and I don't have an intercept. So now I have this matrix, but it's not in my data frame, so I have to add it to my data frame. So I'm going to create a new variable in my data frame. I'm going to call it your dummies. And this new variable will be just the matrix that we created. And I run the command, and if I open my data now, I see that there is a new um, year dummies variable, and that's a matrix that's 110 times 11 column. Now that uh, the year dummies have been added to the data frame, I can run the regression. So I want the summary of the regression of uh, the quantity. over the price plus the wage. So we want the effect of the price, the effect of the median wage, and we want the year dummies. So remember that we don't have an omitted category, so I have to run an aggression, a regression without an intercept. So I have to add the zero plus here. The data comes from my data. Let's run this. So I have the results of the regression here with the effect of price, the average effect of wage, and then I have all these uh, baselines for the year. So in 2001, the intercept will be this one. In 2002, the intercept will be this one, etc. 
Now, suppose that I want an intercept and I want to omit a category. I could actually just skip this data and say, okay, I want an intercept, so I remove the zero. But for year dummies, I want so all the observation, but I want the column only two to eleven. So I'm going to remove two thousand one. And now I run the regression and I see that I have price, wage, and now I have an intercept here. And you see that the intercept value is the value for 2001 in the previous regression. And then for 2002, it's the difference between the intercept and the intercept for 2002. So if we want the intercept for 2002, we take this value here and add 51. And this is the result uh, we have here. So there is a shortcut to do that without having to create a year dummies matrix, but it's less flexible. And the shortcut is to run the regression, putting directly the factor command in it. So I want a summary of the linear regression of quantity over price, wage, and using year as a factor, so using the factor command, uh, it will automatically generate the dummy variables. Data is equal to my data, as usual. And you see we have the same output as before with uh, the category that has automatically been omitted being 2001. So no, we don't have the choice. We have an intercept and we have 2001 as an omitted category. Now, here I use a matrix as a uh, as a um, data format for the dummy variables. And actually, if you open my data, you see that it doesn't show well. The year dummies, it doesn't show as a matrix. So maybe you want to have a different column for each dummy variable. And in that case, you can just convert the matrix to a data frame. So I'm going to have another data frame called year dummies dot frame. And I'm going to use to say that I want to convert the year dummies matrix into a data frame. So if I run this command, I see that before year dummies was a matrix, but for the frame version, I have a little arrow here and I can see the different variables. Now I have to put these variables into my data. And for this, I'm going to use the command cbind, which, is mean, which means uh, binding to data frame using uh, on the column direction. So my data is going to be the old version of my data, but I want to bind it to your dummies frame. So if I run this command, and I reopen my data, I see that now I have new columns that are uh, for 2001, 2002, 2003, etc. So now they are, we have different variables for the dummy variable instead of having one variable with a big matrix inside. And then you use this variable uh, as usual in the, in the model when you run the linear regression. We're going now to cover um, interaction terms. So suppose you want to see if uh, price and wage, so the, the effect of the price um, changes with the level of the median wage in the province. So I want a summary of the linear regression of quantity over price, wage, and price and here I'm going to use two dots 
and wage, and that says I want an interaction between price and wage. I'm going to use factor year as a control two. Data comes from my data. I run the regression, and now I see that I have the intercept, the price, the wage, and the various uh, effects for the years. And now I have a price times wage interaction. And you see that it's actually very significant in this particular case. Um, there is another way to write this. So here you see you have price, wage, and price and wage. There is a shortcut for this command. Is to use price star wage. So the price star wage is going to put in the regression the price itself, the wage itself, and the price times the wage. So if I run the regression, you see that I have exactly the same output as before. I have the price by itself, the wage by itself, and price time wage. Suppose you think the effect of the price changes each year. So in that case, you would write the regression model uh, price, wage. We're going to remove the interaction with the wage here, but we're going to put an interaction between price and the year uh, dummy variable. So I'm going to write price, two dots, factor year. If I run this regression, so here is the effect of the price for 2001, which is the omitted category. And then I have the difference from that effect for 2002. So the effect of the price on the quantity for 2002 will be minus 42 plus 8.6. And then same for 2003, the effect will be minus 42 plus 1.7, etc. So here it's not very significant in the regression. So apparently the effect of price uh, doesn't really change over time. Finally, we are going to see how to add a time trend. So a time trend is basically adding a variable that's equal to 1 for the first year, 2 for the second year, 3 for the third year, etc. And that's when you have uh, variables that are, for instance, growing over time. So you will, uh, if they are linearly growing over time, you want to remove this trend uh, because suppose the price and the quantities are growing over time, both of them, but for different reasons. If you run the regression, you'll see that it will be highly significant, even though there is no relation between them. It's just because they are both growing over time. So we want to remove the trend uh, it's called detrending. So for that, we need first to generate the trending variable. So I'm going to save it into my data trend. So dollar sign trend. Oh, sorry, trend with an e. And so the trend will be uh, using the my data years. But the years are not 1, 2, 3, 4. They are 2001, 2003, 2004, etc. So I could do actually minus 2000. That would work. But suppose they are not years, but they are months, and it's more complicated. So you have a more general way. You say, I'm going to use years as a factor. So you say the years are category. And now they are going to be called your category 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But you don't want to use them as categories. You want to use them as numbers. So you're going to say as numeric. Let's save it. Uh, I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, there is no S at years. OK, now it worked. So if I reopen my data, I should have at the very end a trend variable that say year one, year two, year three, etc., to 11, and then it starts again. So I added my trend variable, and then I run the regression as usual. So I want the summary of the linear regression of quantity. Over price, 
wage and the trend. Uh, the data comes from my data. And I run it and I see that for each year um, there is an increase in quantity, an average increase in quantity by six uh, for controlling for price and wage, but it's not really significant. And I have my estimates for price and wage on the detrended data. So that concludes uh, this series of uh, introduction to R videos and I'll see you in class.